Seeking, that is the praises to Allah, the praises to Allah, the guardian evolver, cherisher, and sustainer of all the worlds. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharika lahu, wa ashhadu an Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa alihi wa sabbihi ajma'in. Amma ba. We thank Allah for blessing us to be here for another Jumu'ah on the top side of this earth. And we are thankful to Allah for having guided us to this way of life that we know is in accord with our nature. In fact, it is the only way of life that God says that he will accept. And if we don't have this particular one on our demise, now Allah said that we will be of the Qasirin, of the losers. And I'm referring to the verse uh, 85 of Surah 3, where Allah makes it clear that this is the only way of life that he will accept. And I call your attention now to uh, a portion of the uh, verse uh, uh, 5, pardon me, verse 3 of Surah 5, where Allah reveals, O Yoma, Ekmeldutu, Nakum, Di Nakum, or Ekmemtu, Alekum, Niamati, Waradi to Lakumul Islam, Di Nan. Translated, today. El Yoma means today. So many will tell you that they believe this is the last of the uh, ayahs, or at least the last day of the ayahs that Allah revealed to our noble prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because it says El Yoma. So by the fact of being on that meme, that means today, not tomorrow, but today. So that's why some of the people will tell you, or scholars or readers of the Quran will tell you that uh, this is the last of the days of the revelation. So it goes on to say, I have completed your way of life, your religion, your deen, for you, completed my favor upon you. And here's the problem. You know, many times people say, why are you always picking out stuff to try to change the meaning? But I think it's very serious because Abdullah Yusuf Ali says, and God has chosen for you Al-Islam as your religion. Oh, he didn't choose it. So if I say I chose something, that means there were other choices, right? So there's no other choice but submission to his will as a way of life that this creator has approved. So the, the words are waradi to. You heard, I say to you, uh, uh, such and such a person was a great person. You say, uh, radi Allahu anha, right? Or on her, may Allah be pleased with her. Or radi Allahu anhu, may Allah be pleased with him, right? So this word radi to, with the two on the end, meaning, I pleased you. Allah is telling us in this ayah, I pleased you with a way of life belonging to you already. Lakum, belonging to you already. al Islam as your way of life. In other words, coming out of the wombs of your mother, our, our mothers, coming out of the sperm of our dad, if you will, we were already fixated and ordained to be in submission to God's will. But we know that after we come out in this world, a lot of stuff is existing that pulls us off of that natural, beautiful, perfect human nature that we come out of the wounds of our mother's web. But God tells us that he has created us the asani takawin, in the best of modes, the best of form, the best of character. Praise be to Allah. So I just wanted to bring that to you that uh, he didn't choose it, nor did he prefer it. He ordained it to be our way of life. Praise be to Allah. So I take you now back to uh, the uh, beautiful part of the Quran where it's talking about Muhammad's contact with the angel of revelation, the angel of Jibril. And Allah reveals in the surah, Takwir, A'ud Billahi Min Shaitan Rajim, Wa Subhi. Either the Nefesa. And I, Allah, swear by the dawn. 
I believe Ali doesn't say that Allah is doing the swearing. But how do I know he's doing the swearing? Because I know something about the grammar, and I'm encouraging you to be a student of this Quran too, because you miss a lot if you rely on the translations or rely on what I say or other people say. So he begins it, wa, wa subahi. He put an E on that H, wa subahi. So we know that's the wa wa swing. I swear by the dawn that I created. Either to nefesa, and when it breathes away, breathes away the darkness. And the word to nefesa is being used. To nefesa has something to do with nefs, nefs, the nefs of the human being. To nefesa is saying that this is something that is being done to the self, the fifth form of the verb. So you had the ability, I had the ability to breathe away the darkness and come into dawn, come into light. So Allah is telling you that this Quran is for that purpose, to bring you what? From darkness into light. So Allah is saying, I swear by this dawn that I have created that you have the ability to dispel the darkness. And then the next ayah says, إِنَّهُ لَكَوْلُ رَسُولٍ كَرِيمٍ Surely it, this Quran, is a message or a word from an honorable messenger. And he makes it very emphatic. Well, in Nahu, in that means surely, surely. One word in English doesn't do, do justice. So I'll put two in there, two surely mm -hmm. for you. Surely, surely, it is a word. He puts la in front of kaulun. Kaulun means saying or word. So he puts a la there. So he gives you a double emphatic there. In that, and then he puts a la there. Then Rasul and Karim, messenger, honorable. Karim means honorable. Right? So who is this honorable messenger Allah is talking about? He's not talking about the Prophet Muhammad at this juncture. He's talking about the angel Jibril at this point. Then it goes on. Indeed, or possessing power with rank before the Lord of the throne. Speaking of Jibril, he has power and rank before Allah. And then it says, Muta in the with authority there and faithful to his trust. No, he's going to deliver exactly what Allah wants him to, to convey to Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then the next ayah, wa ma sahibukum bimajanu. And your companion, speaking of Muhammad, is not crazy or possessed. A lot of times, you know, if you want to do a real uh, insult to, a, to a, an Arab, you imagine them, man. You're crazy. You're full of uh, gin spirits, you know. That's kind of like a curse word. <laughs> Majnoon, you know. And you know, you don't want to be around crazy people. <laughs> you have to really watch some crazy folks, right? You don't know what they're going to do or what, you know. So Allah is assuring Muhammad and assuring us, Muhammad wasn't crazy. This message that he got, it came from the exalted in power. That is Allah himself. And then the next ayah. Well, I can't write who built Ufu kill moving. Well, I can't. That's very strong stuff. Cot means no doubt. And he put a lie in front to make it even more stronger. Well, I can't write who built Ufu kill moving. And no doubt, he saw him. Speaking of Muhammad, seeing the angel of revelation. Bil Ufu kill moving. In the clear horizon, is how Abdullah Ali translated. Follow me now. He translated it as the horizon. And you know, if you see a horizon, you're sitting there and the sun's going to come up. Oh, I know that sun is going to come up now. I can see that beautiful color. And it's coming up on the horizon. No doubt about it. It's clear, it's distinct. So, you should think about it. This angel that he made contact with. Does this angel have a, a physical manifestation? Can you say, there's the angel right there. Think about it. What does Allah say about the angel? He says the angel was created of light. 
Has anyone that we know of seen an angel? Well, they had the Hadith story, right? Where they said that the man came to the prophet and was telling him what the religion was. And uh, uh, Muhammad said, that was the angel teaching us our religion, right? So I'm putting it on your mind that you should know that Allah is saying by using the word ufukun is that Muhammad was able to see this angel in all of its nature, in all of its being. Ufukun suggests that. He saw him clearly, and we know he did because he had contact with him for how many years? 23 years he had contact with this angel of revelation. Allah tells us in the Quran too that he has taught Adam all of it. So you and I, we are some super people, we only but knew. We have the ability to understand the nature of the angel, the nature of the, the lion, right? We can get the tiger to run through hoops, <laughs> a fire and all this. We have the ability to understand the nature of these animals and we use them for our use, our disposal whatever we might want to do, you know? I always mention the story, what I saw on uh, National Geographic, where uh, there were two Africans, no clothes on, just a little hiding their private parts, you know? And they had machetes, each one of them had some sharp machetes, right? And there was a group of uh, pride of lions, as they call them, who were devouring, I believe it's a wildebeest or something. They was, you know, jamming on it, you know, the babies, <laughs> the mother and daddy, all of them was, jumping on the wood of his evening. And so the two Africans, they just walked up there, nice and slow. The lion saw them, what did they do? They backed off, backed off. And they went in, bam, took a leg or, or you know, side, whatever they took, and they just walked on away. And the lions were just watching them. <laughs> and so the narrator said that uh, they understand the nature of the of the lions in such a way where they just go and move quick and move away quick and they all right, you know. So obviously they were able to study the nature of this these lions and say, we can pull this off without worrying about uh, getting injured, you know. That's just an example of what Allah has taught Adam, the human being, the nature of things. And we understand also that Allah has given us this wide universe to traverse and to understand. And there's so much more that we do not understand, but it's a lot that Allah has blessed us to understand. We know how fast the earth is going. We know how fast the sun is going, 12 miles a second. And could you imagine that, a big ball of fire that's contained within itself, controlled, but yet it's moving. Start a fire right here, you can't control it. You don't know which way it's going to go. So here Allah got fire under control. Let me continue here. So I'm saying to you that Muhammad understood the nature of the angel Jibreel. And I would venture to say to you that this angel of revelation is not a physical entity as we are. That's my, my belief. And if you say he is, are you saying that he has a, this angel Jibreel going to die one day? <laughs> we don't know him to have, have suffered any death, you know. These angels are going to be existing all of the time. We don't have anything in the Quran to suggest that angels die. Am I right? Praise be to Allah. So he was able to make contact with this angel of revelation. And then it goes on. And he was not stingy. Muhammad, after he got this revelation, he wasn't stingy with it, like a, some Masonic order type deal, you know. He rushed to Khadijah. He rushed to Abu Bakr, Bilal, Ali, and told them what Allah had revealed to him in the cave. And it was ongoing. When he get revelation, he gave the revelation to the people, right? So I'm saying that to you. You and I have an obligation to give the highest knowledge that we have. And a lot of times you'll speak to people like myself, and I don't know the mindsets of the people here and how much people study and all of that, but I have to give 
the highest knowledge that I have, perchance, that those who don't know will aspire to know so they can understand better what is being conveyed. So I, again, encourage you to give the highest knowledge you have to all of the people. We have an obligation to spread this dean to the world. It is not a word from a spirit accursed, from shaitan. Allah is assuring you and I and Muhammad that this is not from the devil. This is from me. So then the beautiful refrain, Fa'ayna tazhabun. So where are you going? This is what Allah is asking us the question. Straight up. So, fa, so, ayna, where are you all going? Tazhabun. What you going to do? What's up? Now that I'm giving you this message of revelation to enhance your life, to pull you out of savagery and, uh, and wandering of mind and not knowing which way to go, what are you going to do? This is Allah asking us the question. What's up? Again, it says, In huwa illa this little alami. Surely it is nothing more or except what a message from the Lord of all of the worlds. Liman shah amin kum With profit to whoever among you who will to go straight. You want to go straight? You want to fight off the shaitan? Go to this message of Quran. Firstly, go to this message of Quran and bounce it off mm -hmm. of that original nature that you came out of the wounds of your mothers with. Have your mind in a good spirit when you read the Quran. That I believe the whole of this book, and I want Allah to open it up so I can understand it and apply it to my life. You know, the other day, um, about 3 o'clock in the morning. You know, you're talking about getting high, right? You know, a lot of times people like to get high off of drugs and all of that. I've been that way before. Beer and all of that, right? Feel good, right? But it's nothing like the high of knowing that Allah is, is, is with you and giving you guidance and giving you prosperity. So I was reading the Quran, and uh, I was looking for a word relating to taqwa. And most of us know taqwa means uh, to have reverence for God and piety and devotion and obedience, right? So there was a number of ayahs in the Quran that has words relating to taqwa. So I had this brand new Quran. I had it maybe about two weeks. Brand, brand new Quran, right? And uh, I'm sitting down, down in my basement, and it was on the table there. And I said, I gotta find this, this verse in the Quran. So I had my concordance. I knew where it was. I got my concordance out. 7611 is what the verse I was looking for. So I didn't look over there and say, well, let me go to the back. But I know it's at the back. I didn't do any of that. I'm looking at the computer and open up the Quran. Allah opened it up to the ayah, 7611. It was right there on my right hand. I said, man, I was high. I'm still high. <laughs> From, from, from that happening, you know. So that's telling me and telling you too. Well, Allah, I'm not lying. Well, Allah, right here on the mic. Put my hand on the Quran. Allah is telling me, I control your fingers. <laughs> I control your hands. And he tells us in the Quran over and over again, well, Allahu ala kulli shayin kadir, right? And Allah has power over all things. Not sometimes, but at all times. Why do I say at all times? Because there's no verbs in that. Wallahu ala kulli shayin kadir. No action words in there. So you should know that when you are trying to spread a message of truth, Allah is going to give you powerful help. He gives, you, gives us powerful help. I'm sure some of you can come up with examples of things like that that's happened to you. And that's not the first time it happened. I was going to Cleveland one time, opened up to 4119. I was looking for that. Couldn't prepare the cookbook before I left. Open up the Quran. There it is for you, brother. <laughs> Allah opened it up for me, you know. So things like this happens. And it's 
assuring to the spirit and to the heart that Allah is who he says that he is. So, فَأَيْنَ تَذْهَبُونَ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَى ذِكْلُ الْعَالَمِينَ لِمَنْ شَاءَ مِنْكُمْ أَيَسْتَكُونَ يَسْتَكِينَ Pardon me. وَمَا تَشَاءُونَ إِلَى أَيَّ شَاءَ اللَّهُ رَبُّ الْعَالَمِينَ Let me get the translation of that quickly here. I'm mad at myself. I'm just trying to let this Quran get wet in the back of my car. Brand new Quran. But you shall not will, except as Allah wills, the cherisher of all of the world. So it is Allah's will that we study this Quran. And it is Allah's will that we get profit out of it if we are sincere and we come to Allah with, as Ibrahim did with a carbon selling, a sound heart, a sound orientation and desire to understand it and apply it in our lives. Our Lord, complete our life for us. Forgive us, we fear you, have power of all things at all times. I mean. Allahumma nasta'inuka wa nasta'kiruka wa nubika wa natbakallu alayka wa nafni alayka wa kaya wa nashkuruka wa la nakuruka. So you know, some people like to ask questions or be curious about how did this person become a khatib or a lecturer, you know? And uh, real quickly, um, one day I was, I want you to know something about me. My name is Sadiq, Sadiq Jihad. My name used to be Ronald Ziegler, German Jew, okay? <laughs> and my daddy was uh, a Harlem Globetrotter. He played for the Harlem Globetrotters. And it was Werder Ziegler. And he always taught us to stand up to that white man, you know? Don't cow down to any man. Look, every man and woman you come in contact with in the eye. You know, so I, I grew up with that kind of kind of spirit. So I went to a barber shop one time, and uh, I usually come on here. Some of you might have heard this story before. And uh, that day, Allah had me to cut my own hair. Like I cut my own hair last night. Not this morning, I cut it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so uh, the man there was a follower of Elijah Muhammad. Real quickly, he says to me, the white man that caused all your problems, he's the devil. He's the skunk of the, of the planet and all of this, you know. He's telling the teaching of Elijah Muhammad. So some of what Elijah Muhammad said was true, and some of it was untrue. You should know that. I am not a follower of Elijah Muhammad. I am not a follower of Farrakhan. I am not a follower of any man over the prophet Muhammad, okay? I'm not a person who followed this school or that school, you know. The Islam that I believe I know come from me studying this Quran in English first and then start studying in Arabic so I can understand it for myself. So I won't be caught up in this school or that school. I'm free, and you should be free too. As I'm thinking right now, that the brother who's a Shia, he says, that he knows for a fact that Prophet Muhammad stood and prayed with his arms to his side. So right away you would say, were you there? Did you ever see him pray like that? <laughs> so the answer would be no. So just by the fact that the person would say that, you should be suspicious of what this person might want to tell you about anything, right? So then you got people arguing, no, oh, pray like this, pray like you know, this, all of that, you know. That's not what we are about. We are to study this Quran and understand it for ourselves. And Allah does not emphasize the positions in that way where put it on your side or put it here, you know. So um, he sold me this album by Elijah Muhammad. And this album said, Elijah said, if a man don't treat you right, how is he going to teach you right? So I said, well, I know this white man ain't treating me right. <laughs> 
I'm on the job. He said, I can't read the newspaper on the, on the shop floor, and he's doing it, you know. He put dogs on us right here in America, tired and feathered us. You, could you imagine that? Put tire on you and feather on you, be on, on you for the rest of your life. Cut your leg off because you tried to get out of that bad situation, you know. Cut our women open when they were nine months pregnant to put fear in the other slaves on the plantation and all of this. So, you know, I was open for any African American should be open to trying to study what's going on here. Why are we on the bottom of the totem pole, you know? So that was my mind there. So I said, well, let me start checking out what this Islam is about. And so I followed Elijah Muhammad for a couple of years and uh, a lot of stuff that they did. I didn't buy all of the time, <laughs> you know, but some of us bought it, all of it, and they're still with it today. The people that follow Farrah Khan are still with some of that falsehood and stuff that's out there today. Talking about the white man was made on the island in the Aegean Sea and all of this, and we, the African Americans, made them. We made the yellow man, the Chinese man, the, the Japanese man, the, the Indian man. We did this. This is the story. This is the myth that is still being taught as I stand here today. And so his son came into the position, and he was encouraging us to be a student of the Quran. So I went to classes at Wayne County Community College and began to study it and been studying ever since. So I'm saying to you that the mind that you hear me with is not from W.D. Muhammad, it's not from this person, that person. It's from my own probe into the Quran, but with Imam Muhammad's leadership in the sense of telling us that you should see the Quran rationally. You should see things that don't add up rationally as metaphor and things like this. That was a great help for me and for anybody. So I right away dispelled the idea that a man could walk water. You know they say Jesus walked the water, right? So anybody know a little bit about science, we know that uh, you can't walk no water. <laughs> You weigh 150 pounds, you ain't gonna be able to just, just walk on the water, you know. So even if he if he did do that, if you saw a man walk water, wouldn't you follow him for the rest of your life? <laughs> I know I would. This dude walking water, he, he must be, you know, a super person, you know. So the man W. D. Muhammad was dispelling these kind of things, like Noah's Ark. Like they took the animals two by two and put them on the ark. One little, little boat, they pissing and defecating on each other and all of that, right? And uh, the lion, he, he looking at that zoo. I used to eat him. I can't eat him now, you know? So, so, so many things got to develop in that kind of scenario, right? So the Imam Muhammad gave us the mind that you can't accept no Bible fairy tales and you can't accept any Quran fairy tales. So the law says to us in the Quran, and have we sit down this Quran, on a mountain. You saw it humble itself and break into pieces. Right away, you should dispel the idea that I can put this Quran on a mountain, it's going to cause it to, to burst into pieces. It just won't happen. <laughs> That's not the way Allah has established reality. Can the mountain read? Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. He can't do it. The mountain can't do it, right? So that must be a metaphor. So you should be a student of the Quran and find out what is the metaphor about. I don't have time to talk about it now, but inshallah, I'll talk about it in the future. But I'm just saying to you that you should have the mind, we should have the mind, to be students of the Quran and let Allah teach us, right? And he tells us in the Quran, Allah al Quran. He teaches the Quran. And he does it over and over and over again throughout time. How do I know that? I know that from the verb structure itself. Alama. It sounds strong, doesn't it? And it means to do something over a long period of time. Over and over and over again. So this Quran is open to the masses of the people. Don't exalt scholars or people that you think know something and and think that you'll never be able to eclipse the knowledge that they have and you just have to sit 
on the floor and be fed by them for the rest of your life? You have the ability to have some insight into this Quran. No one has monopoly on the knowledge of the Quran. No one. We are shareholders. <laughs> and our taqwa has a lot to do with how much insight Allah is going to give us and how much piety and success we will have in our lives. And if we never become millionaires or billionaires, if we come out of here with a lot of taqwa, then we got a good chance to be a resident of the Jannah when we leave. So I conclude with uh, a portion of uh, al Karia. And if I went over, please pardon me. Uh, left. And I talked about these schools of thought and everything because I know sometimes a person might hear me say something and say, I don't buy that, or, I don't buy that. I know you're not going to buy everything I say, but at least out of the video, okay, I'm going to check and see if what he's saying has any merit. Like I mentioned some weeks ago that there's nowhere in the Quran where Allah uses the word hijab as a face covering or a head covering. It's a partition, it's a screen. You don't believe it? Well, look at the eight ayahs in the Quran and you'll see that Allah defined a hijab as a partition or a screen, you know. But I heard some chatter that somebody was upset with some of the stuff I said about that. But I didn't mean no harm. I love to impart knowledge and I want us as a community to be successful in every way. So I hope you are getting the idea that I mean well. And I don't mean to cause any controversy or confusion. But confusion pre-existed my, my coming. In fact, Allah tells us in the Quran that uh, later generations cut off the affair of unity and divided themselves. Allah predicted it in the 2192 of the Quran, or 2193. He tells us that. That he knew. So in this story it says, So Amma man takulat mawazi nu. Then he whose balance of good deeds will be found heavy. Fahua fi isaiti radiyah. He or she would be in a state of pleasure. That word again, radia, pleasure. Like I said, raditu, I pleased you with this way of life. And then the next of the two ayahs, these pages are wet. That's the next one. So if your de deeds are found heavier than your bad deeds, you will be in a state of pleasure. But if your bad deeds are found heavier than your uh, good deeds, you will have as your home the bottomless pit. Follow this. Abdul Aziz Ali is saying you will have as your home a bottomless pit. The word is mother there. Why is mother there? So it says, and his mother, Fa'umuhu, Habiyah, and his mother will be the bottomless pit. Mother, Um means mother, it also means the base or the foundation of a thing. So we know that Um is suggesting that there's going to be a nurturing agent in the pit <laughs> for us to be nurtured and purified again to the point where we were when we came out of our wounds of our mothers. But we just don't know how long it's going to take. Some it's going to take longer for some of us than others, right? Then Allah asks the question, well, man, drakha, man, he, uh, Knowest thou what this is? And Allah gives you and I something that we can relate to. 
It is a fire blazing fiercely. And you know, if you just touch the iron just for a second, oh, and it hurt for days. So just a touch of a little fire, you know, on the wrong place in your body is not pleasant. So a lot of things you know that there's going to be a burning out of that wickedness that we picked up in our lives in that bottomless pit. That bottomless pit is going to be a nurturing agent for you and I to get back straight the way we were we came out that very first time. So in concluding, I mentioned to you 2192 and 2193. In Havihi, in that problem, in the Havihi, umatukum, umatau wahida ten, wa ana fa'abudun. Surely Allah speaks the truth and he's in translation. Surely, surely, this community of you all. What did Abdul Salih say here? Surely this brotherhood of you all. That's, that, that's not good. What about the sisterhood? <laughs> Why would he want to say brotherhood? You know? That's major to me. So surely you all's community is one single community. And if you want to know anything about Arabic, you know that Allah is using the word one three times in a row. In the Havihi, Umatukum, you all is one community. Ummetau is one community. Wahidatan means one, two. So Allah is trying to force it into our mind's eye that you are one community. It shouldn't have the Shiites and the, and the Hambalites and the, the Shafis fighting one another and all of that. He says, I am your Lord and cherisher. Therefore, serve me and no other. And then the next ayah says, But later generations cut off the affairs of unity, one from another. Yet will they all return to us. That's why Allah is making it clear. I'm telling y'all, y'all one community, y'all, you know, scattering yourselves into different stuff. I don't want to deal with it. That's <laughs> pretty much what Allah is saying, right? So I hope I said something of value and of merit. And uh, after the uh, prayer, we want to do a janazah prayer for uh, our brother's wife, uh, Malika, who, who passed away. And the way we usually do it, as you know, we go into roles and uh, we do uh, one Allahu Akbar, and then we say Al Fatiha, and then we do another Allahu Akbar, and we say the prayer. Of Ibrahim, Allahumma Salih and Muhammadin, and so on. And then the third, Allahu Akbar, we pray for the deceased sister, we say Allahu Akbar, and then we pray for those who are living beyond her demise or her transition. I would be better to say that. So Allah is letting you and I know there's life after death. Believe it. Allah said, This is a book for those who have in their hearts the assurance of the hereafter to come. You believe you're going to live after you die? I do. I had no doubt about it in my mind. If, if I'm a not a physical reality right now, and the, the part of me that's, 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 that's really talking to you is not my body, not my hands, not my, my tongue, it's my spirit, my mind, my soul, my nefs. And my nefs is not a physical thing. So the nefs of the human being leaves the body, and Allah has whatever thing that he has for us in the life to come. Nobody died and came back and told us how it, how it is. But we know Allah said he is the one that yet the wife cool. He completes us when we leave this, this earth. And we don't know all of how it goes, but we know Allah gives us pictures of it. Gardens are this where rivers flow, right? And the greeting therein will be salam, and you'll never be asked to leave. So we believe that, as Muslims, for sure. We come Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar.
الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا صراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين والعفر إن الإنسان لفي كسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات فاتوحصوا بالحق وتوحصوا بالصبر الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا صراط المستقيم صراط الذين نعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين قل هو الله أحد الله صمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله ربنا أحفظ علينا صبرا وتابع دامنا وسنة على القوم الكافرين على القوة على قوة الكاسنسي and patience to make turn ourselves to help us against the rejection of faith within and without means Okay, so we assemble for the Janaza for our sister, if you all would uh, be a part of that.